what, what's the purpose of disability studies? What does that mean? And how is that different than what we've been talking about with inclusion? Uh, I think the first thing I wanted to state about disability studies is it, it tends to be a very critical perspective. And in my experience in reading different authors, um, a lot of it has to do with disrupting or questioning ways that we would see inclusion working. So it's, it's sort of like you know throwing a, a monkey wrench in the gears and really making a stop and think very hard about inclusion, or excuse me, how inclusion is working. Probably the best example I can give uh, when we talked first semester with Bernadette Baker in the idea of labeling, and when she compared that to eugenics, and that whole idea that you know that could be a controversial way to look at inclusion, that I think uh, is 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 sort of paramount in disability studies, really disrupting our, our assumed ways of knowing. And then I asked, okay, so how is that done, right? Um, one thing that Benjamin talks about, and that sort of is a general theme of disability studies, is that inclusion is actually a form of exclusion, if that makes sense. From a disability studies perspective, what they would say is as soon as you've identified someone who's included, you've excluded them in some way. Uh, now, whether you agree or disagree with that, that that's the perspective that they're taking. Um, and as the slide says here behind me, disabled people are made to matter as excluded and marginalized. And this is what disability comes to mean. That whole idea, just by the fact you have inclusion, you have people that need to be included. By in having people you've identified as needing to be included, you've already excluded them. So that's sort of how disability studies disrupts the whole process of what we assume inclusion to be and what we assume inclusion to do. There's a phrase, uh, it's, it's a title in fact, of, of a part of a chapter by Tanya Tichkowski, um, and she uh, wrote the, the quote I just referred to earlier, and she calls it normative violence, is, is how she phrases it, and that whole idea, what she's trying to say there, in a very strong way I think, is talk about how um, you know, when we normalize things, and if you think about the article by Nindan Cullum about, you know, normalization, what does that mean? The whole idea that we assume people want to be as normal as possible. That whole idea and that assumption really positions some people in a bad way, uh, to the point that from a disability studies perspective, it's described as normative violence. So, disability studies really has some big ideas, I, I like to call them, and I'm not sure that anyone has written and said these are the main tenets of disability studies, but this is sort of the big ideas I've taken from a few authors and put together to say, yes, these are sort of the central tenets or the central themes of disability studies, how it disrupts, right? I think the first biggest tenet of disability studies is it really talks about the idea of a social construction and that idea that disability comes to be because I see someone else in a different way. And because I see someone else as different than me, and different than what I assume to be normal, they therefore become disabled. And disability studies really wants to bring out that social part of identifying others as different than us, right? When we identify someone else as different, it says something about them, but it also says something about us and what we assume to be normal. So that's a real big piece of disability studies is the idea that things get socially constructed. And sometimes we forget that, and we just assume that, you know, uh, it's unquestionable that some people are disabled. What we forget to uh, think about sometimes, I guess, is the idea that there's a lot of back and forth social processes that play into that. Another big piece of disability studies is what I'll call medicalization, uh, or, or the medical uh, field, and how that intersects with inclusion, and therefore, creates an issue within a disability studies framework. We talked about that with Bernadette Baker, the whole idea of the proliferation or swarming effect of labels. Uh, Tanya Tichkowski talks about the medicalization and how the medical field seems to have this huge amount of power over telling us who is and who isn't normal, right? And that it becomes unquestioned that if there's a medical diagnosis, you know, that there's nothing more the school can do uh, than to take the advice of the medical field. So power becomes a big issue there. One of the problems with that is that medicalization doesn't just identify disability, but it identifies bodies as having something wrong with them. So right from the start, if you're identified as having a bodily problem, then right away it's a, it's, it, it's a negation. It's seen as a negative. And one of the concerns of the disability studies field is that when you're seen as disabled, 
you're automatically positioned as having something wrong with you by people who are identifying themselves as normal. And it becomes a really, really bad cycle. And that's one of the, the concerns from the disability studies movement, is the more we listen to medicine, the more we envision some people as, as, as having things wrong with them, right? Uh, from a medical perspective, from a social perspective, uh, it's a big issue. So what does disability studies worry about? Well, one of the big things it worries about is the assumption that people we've identified as disabled uh, should and always are striving to be more normal, more like us. And that's a big issue within disability studies. Again, the whole idea that we assume if there's something wrong with you, of course you'd want to be more normal, you'd want to be more like us, and therefore, um, how does that position them? Because really, from a disability studies perspective, what they're being told is you're not good enough now. And to be good enough, you need to be normaler. And think back to conversations we had, like this morning, between inclusion and integration, and that whole idea that who needs to change. Uh, if it's the student that needs to change to meet the demands of a system that doesn't have to change, that's integration. If the system is willing to change, then it becomes more inclusive, right? So if you put that perspective on it, you can see how disability studies you know, seems to have an argument there. Again, that whole idea that, that people are being labeled as having something wrong with them with the assumption that they need to change to be more normal, to be more like us. And Tanya Titskoski looked at that through a phrase that she called the able disabled person. And that's a creation that she would tell you uh, comes from um, society, normal society, if you will. The whole idea that our able disabled person is someone who has to overcome their disability and who wants to and is always striving to contribute to society in normal ways despite their difference. So the able disabled person actually reinforces our versions of normal and its importance because they're always trying to be normaler. And we're going to look in a few minutes at some articles where you know people have written them in a certain way to make it seem like, yes, why wouldn't someone who's been identified as disabled want to be as normal as possible? And we make these assumptions not really thinking about how that positions that person right, as being defective in some way. So I'm going to define the term, uh, and this is from Tanya Titskoski's book. It's a person who appears oriented to and desirous of this normalcy. They're always trying to be normaler. And uh, again, as I stated, that helps to reinforce our own versions of what, uh, what normal is. The big way that's done is through what, uh, and again, this is Tanya Titskoski who talks about this. She calls it the overcoming narrative. And what happens is, and we're going to look at this, is that uh, the way, it's the way things are written and the way stories are told. Uh, the first concern is that most often, when there's a story about someone overcoming their disability, uh, who's writing it? And in a lot of cases, if it's the normal person writing it, they're going to have a slant. They're going to have their own slant on it. And their slant, of course, is that, why wouldn't this person want to be normaler? And uh, if you think on really any story that you've encountered with, um, you know, someone who has a, a maybe a physical issue, a mental issue, and they do something to overcome it or succeed, right? The question becomes, well, what is success? And how is success defined for that person? Is it defined as them succeeding on their own terms and trying to do something they want to do? Or is it defined by them being normaler and contributing to society in a way that's deemed normal? And the concern with the overcoming narrative is that it reinforces versions of, of normalcy. It doesn't really challenge the system to change at all. It's all about the person overcoming something that we believe to be wrong with them so they can be more like us. So that's the critical perspective uh, from which uh, disability studies operates.